Once again, I wish you all a very good morning. It is my pleasure and honor today to welcome all of you who are gathered here on behalf of the Delhi Medical School Alumni Association and the Kennedy Society of Medicine to bear witness to an important event. This was organized to launch the autobiography of a proud alumnus of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Peradeniya, who contributed tirelessly to make his alma mater of the today. Professor Nima Senanayaka, Emeritus Professor, University of Peradeniya. Professor Senanayaka is not merely a scholar. He is a multifaceted personality, a distinguished scholar, skilled administrator, award-winning researcher, and a literary genius. Dashaka Hattak is his life story. Professor Sena and I, for all the years, brought glory to the faculty, university, and the medical fraternity through his sheer genius. PEMSA and the KSM are pr proud to have organized this event to launch his autobiography. Without taking much time to start off the proceedings, I would like to invite the following people to come forth to light the traditional light lamp. Professor Nima Sena Naikal, the chief guest, Parita, Dr. Parita Bekon, guest of honor, Professor M.D. Ramamansa, Acting Dean, Professor Manoj Patiyage, the keynote speaker, Professor N.A. D. Samar Dunga, representing FEMSA, Professor Tushar Kudagamana, the immediate past president of FEMSA, president of the KSM, Professor Saman Nanayakara, special invitees, Ms. Chaturika Senanayaka, Dr. Michael Hektiarachi, and Mr. Gayan from the Samudra Press, representing the academic staff of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Peradeniya, Professor Chandika Jayasinghe, representing the student, one student who is present today. May I, all request, uh, may I request all of the others to please stand, stand up for the right of your And also, uh, sorry. Morning, everybody. Um, the chief guest today, um, Dr. Parita Bhikkhun, um, and the guest of honor, Professor Dila Mahansa, the uh, vice chancellor of the uh, University of Peradini, Professor Pat Mahanjo Patiriki, the acting dean of the medicine, Professor NDS Amaratunga, the former dean of the medical faculty and keynote speaker today. Professor Nima Senanayaka, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of PEMSA, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you for this book launch, which PEMSA is happy to co co host in collaboration with the KSM. The author of the, of the book is no stranger to all gathered here today and needs no formal interaction. And the story is much the same with the chief guest, the guest of honor and the keynote speaker. However, on behalf of PIMSA and the KSM, we would like to extend a warm welcome to our chief guest, Dr. Parita Bekpon, an alumnus of Peradeniya who has made a very significant contribution to the health services of Sri Lanka and currently continuing with good work with the WHO. Your presence 
today is much appreciated and your wise counsel as an advisor or the counsel of PEMSA is fully appreciated. Our guest of honor is no stage with PEMSA and dear sir, thank you very much for raising this occasion and it's your busy schedule. Professor Senai is an outstanding alumnus of our faculty. He is a former dean of the faculty and also a researcher for excellence who contributed to advancement of science with some groundbreaking work related to organic phosphate poisoning. He is a versatile personality with many other attributes which I am sure the other speakers will highlight. VS PEMSA is happy to host this event when you launch your autobiography, Dashaka Hatak. As PEMSA, we salute you for your work and wish you all the best. Very best. Distinguished invitees, we are honored by your presence, taking time off your busy schedules to attend this grand book launch. Your presence today is added much color to this event and we appreciate it very much. On behalf of PEMSA, I would like to thank the President and the Council of KSM for their support to make this event a success and all those in the Council who rally around in organizing this event. Thank you. Thank you, Master. There has been a small change in the agenda today due to the extremely busy schedule of our guest of honor, who needs to leave shortly for another commitment. The guest of honor today, as Professor Kudaramana said, is no stranger to you all. He is another proud member of the faculty, Professor M.D. Namavansar, Professor of Surgery and the Vice Chancellor of the University of Peladenia. May I cordially invite you, sir, to impart a few words. short one because um, that's urgent uh, maybe that I have to attend and sure knowing what the kind of meeting and uh, to develop a vision for the um, university and also to the development of data candy by the government and Professor Sarah and I called when he was upset yesterday when I said this and so he'll be happy that uh, I'm contributing uh, to a worthy cause. Autobiography 
belongs to that second category. There will be a lot for us to learn from the part Professor Senanayaka has written. And we will wait him to go through your books uh, at some stage. And then I'm sure there will be accomplishments stated in this book, and that is what Dr. Dandanya mentioned. And we know uh, as a clinician, a neurologist, researcher, and close to my heart as an administrator and very efficient administrator uh, of the faculty of medicine and with the, with the head of the department, and also in the other work that you are very good at and uh, creative work in art and culture, you have accomplished all these things. And um, that is a glory to the university, medical faculty, and also to you and your family and your daughter is here as well. But then, from a humble beginning to become one of the greatest in this country, not only the field of medicine, but the other areas, whatever you have touched, there has been, I'm sure, there have been a lot of good principles that you followed and also the work practices that you cultivated thanks to you yourself and some of your teachers and parents and so on. I think that is something that I would like to learn from this book. The what good habit and for example, you never stop thinking. You are a very good listener. You carefully analyze problems and state few words. There were million words. And also, you are anticipating, and that is how you publish so many research works. Intermediate syndrome that was referred to. I think at that time you did not understand, sir, how important that is going to be. It should not have been an intermediate syndrome. There is intermediate is the Spanish term. There is no attachment of this either pair in your senanayaka. And um, so those qualities are the ones that the university, young academics, and the students should try to learn and inculcate, inculcate so that they can at least walk a little distance of the distance that Professor Senanayaka has uh, uh, walked. And also, more importantly, his commitment and the labor that he has put in and to the best possible whatever he takes up. And, sir, as a chief administrator of the university and also some time ago of the faculty, and we need people when you are the senior administrator to use as a buffer and showcase your institution. And, and to go and represent your organization. And of course, then there are others here, but the reference is made to you today. And as a dean at that time and as the vice chancellor today, I'm happy that we have people like Professor Sena Nayaka to showcase our University of Pennsylvania. And if you become a senior administrator, only you will know how important to have such acceptable people and known both locally and worldwide. Professor so Sena Nayaka, and before I wind up, once again, congratulate you for your work. And I know that this is not the end, and when somebody writes your autobiography, and you can do stop there, but you are not the man of that kind. And on behalf of the wider university community, the Vice Chancellor cannot make it, and he has another commitment there. And uh, we wish you the very best in coming years and decades. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Representing the Kennedy Society of Medicine, I now invite the President of the KSM, Dr. Saman Nanak Khadr, to address the gathering. Good morning, uh, President Marcella Nanak, Chief Guest, Dean Faculty of Medicine, and 
esteemed uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. So, Professor Senanayaka was the president of Conservative Medicine, which I am representing today as a president. He was the president in 1979 to 1980. And he raised the standards of KSM to further heights and brought credit to KSM. So, may I have five minutes from your valuable time to talk a few things about uh, Maestro. Emeritus Professor Nimar Salahatan, the multifaceted, multi-talented person who holds the centre stage today. So he's a, I don't know how to introduce him, so he's a consultant physician, a neurologist, a toxicologist, a clinical neurophysiologist, an academic, a professor in medicine, a researcher, a scientist, an author of books, an artist, a lyricist, a musician, a filmmaker, film scriptwriter, telegrama scriptwriter, very recently he did a short film and he's a philanthropist. He has uh, donated his time, money, uh, values, experiences, skills and talents to, uh, to others to help to create a better world. So he's a proud product of Peradeni Medical School as mentioned earlier. Obtained MD in medicine from University of Colombo and became a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians. Professor Enarag is a scientist with hundreds of publications in both international and national platforms and a scientific researcher. He was awarded the DSC by the University of Peradeni in recognition of his achievements in toxicology and neurology. An academic with a rare achievement of obtaining three doctorates, MD in medicine, a PhD and a DSC. So, Professor Chenard is uh, best known for his work on neurotoxicity of pesticides and particularly organophosphorus compounds and he published extensively on this topic. He coined the term intermediate syndrome and described it, a clinical phase of organophosphorus poisoning. And he is an authority on epilepsy and other neurological disorders. He currently leads with an Australian college, a Wellcome Trust funded initiative to reduce deaths from pesticides. Professor Senaka has served as the chairman of the Board of Studies in Medicine at the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine. He was the president of Sri Lanka Medical Association and president of KSM and has mentored and guided a lot of number of leading clinicians and scientists to the world. And there are many other facets and aspects to his life. So he is a great writer and has published about 18 books, both medical and non-medical. A few of the medical books he has published are uh, about uh, epilepsy, strokes, migraine, uh, about parasitic infestations, viral infections, amoebiasis and many other things. And I think last one was Galabitika. So he, he published a lot of books which were aimed at, at the general public, layman also. And once that are being done, you have to come up, Suvatarayaka Nindak and Suvasihina. And mention a few words about his other, other sites now, uh, dimensions of his career. Well, he is a famous uh, scriptwriter and has scripted many uh, television dramas and documentaries shown on national television and has won international awards as well. So, Gangulian Negodota was a story woven around a patient with epilepsy uh, which was uh, uh, it was screened I think about uh, three, three decades back. Maya Mandira, Durga Ante, Maya Ru, Bhavala Kanya, Kinnaragamane, and the famous Teledama and Alalanga Balabu, a uh, few to be mentioned. So I think Alalanga Balabu was broadcast in 1980. The work he did, all these were to deliver messages to the general public on medical conditions, such as epilepsy, psychiatric illnesses, leprosy, etc. And also to get the public to understand that these can be treated. So he's a vocalist, a lyricist, and has performed at several venues, ranging, a singer, ranging from several venues from the national television 
sitting along with uh, greats such as uh, Master Amaradeva and Prem Sri Kevadasa. From that down to the faculty bhakti gil during Vesak times and it can be down in Vesak programs. We remember him bringing uh, Pandit Amaradeva and Maestro uh, Prem Sri Kevadasa to the faculty of the dean and arranging events where classical songs were sung with uh, our students. So this is the category of the person, the genius whom we are talking about today and we are going to uh, get in touch with his autobiography soon. So the case in Candice Medicine is very proud about our past president and uh, I'm happy to stop here and uh, let the program run. Thank you very much. So wish uh, all of you a nice program and wish all the best to first time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This event would not have been possible without the wholehearted support and the strength of the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Peradania, Professor Vasant Pinto. Unfortunately, she is not able to participate this event today in person due to an unavoidable other commitment. However, she has sent us a good bill and a message which we read out by the Acting Dean, Professor Manoj Patri. The Chief Guest, Dr. Parita Bekhon, uh, the keynote speaker, Professor Amar Emeritus Professor Nimad Senaha distinguished invitees, members of the staff, students, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to read the message sent from Professor Vasanti Pinto, the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, who I regret to inform you is unable to present on this occasion as she had to leave for Colombo for an unexpected event. Emeritus Professor Nimad Senaha has indeed made a noteworthy contribution to our faculty as a professor of medicine, researcher, and an eminent clinician. He attained great heights in his respective discipline and brought international honor to the Faculty of Medicine, University of Peradenia, with his groundbreaking research, including intermediate syndrome, that has been published in renowned international journals. Many of his researchers are very much sought after and are still being referred to and have launched many. Professor Senanayaka has a passion for the aesthetic field and has directed teledramas and films, most were extremely popular during the infancy of Rupavahini in Sri Lanka. He has written several novels too. His latest publication in his autobiography. We are so glad that he has coincided his life from which we can learn much in this moment. This inspirational book will be unveiled and I am eagerly looking forward to reading facets of his personality that I have not been privy to before and the motivational focus behind his eminent success. I am sure this book will be very well received and an empowering blessing to all who read it. I look forward to reading this book and eagerly anticipate this launch. May I also take, take this opportunity to Wish Professor Nima Senanayaka well and all success. I hope that he will continue his scholarly research, clinical practice, involvement in the arts, and excellent track record of publications that benefit so many and society as whole. Well. On a personal note, let me also tell this August audience Professor Nima Senanayaka was my first guru in my professional career. So I learned my ABC of research work from him and I am ever so grateful to him. Dear sir, I am also eagerly waiting to read uh, this Dashakahata and uh, may the Nobel Triple Gem bless you a, a happy, healthy and fruitful life. Thank you sir. Next is the time to welcome our chief guest. The chief guest for this auspicious occasion today is a very special person. He is literally the first student of the Faculty of Medicine of University of Peradenia. With the surname starting with the letter A, he was the first student to be registered with the first batch of the faculty. Dr. Pali Tabekon, over to you, sir, to address the gathering. Let me start uh, by saying a very good morning to all of you. Firstly, I am very humbled and privileged to be here uh, and I am very pleased that my friend of not seven decades but maybe little less than that, maybe about six decades, 
uh, thought it fit to invite me for this very important August occasion. Uh, so much has been said already, and I, I have not seen the book, I have not read the book. I think it's kept it a secret. I don't even know what he has written in that. But nevertheless, uh, what we heard so far indicates, and from what we know about Nimal, we know it will be a classic, it will be a hot seller, and there are many, there are going to be many lessons for us as well as those following us to learn from his life story. Let me start off, uh, I'll make it very short, let me start off with, with two little stories. Uh, once, in the 70s, uh, I met Professor Bunsen Yuratna, later he was my boss in WHO, and uh, I remember him telling me, uh, there is a chap called uh, Nimal Senaik in your faculty, one of the brightest young men I have found. I think he was doing some research, you getting research advice from Bull, I think, at that time. He said, you can expect big things, he will be able to name, remember. He told me way back in the mid-70s or so. Then later than, fast forward to about three years ago, Bull's friend and successor and person that all of us know, uh, Professor Carlo Fonseca, Nimal, myself and Carlo are sitting at a meeting like this, three of us sitting with, next to each other, and Carlo suddenly said, uh, Nimal, you must be feeling like Alexander. Now, I, I don't know what he was trying to say, he said, you must be like Alexander. I think Nimal himself was perplexed, he was not sure what he was referring So I asked Carlo, why are you saying that? No, he has no more lands to conquer. And that's the problem Alexander had, he had nothing more to conquer. <laughs> so that, that in a very short statement describes uh, the journey that Nimal has uh, undertaken over the years. I, I remember this very well, so I thought I should share, share them with uh, the few who probably have not heard this. Now, I first heard of Nimal, I didn't, hear, I didn't, I didn't meet him, I had not met him. I heard of him in 1970, I joined the faculty. Uh, in 1970, I came in February 1970, and uh, I think the final year exam was that time. And Nimal going to first bench 70 batch, right? He was 70 batch, and two of my friends, uh, whom he knows very well, uh, Randy Zianagi and Karun Naito, who were registrars uh, to Paramanam and to Mark and Marker, they told me we were living together in the hall at the same, same time. Today, a guy called, a student called Nimal Senai came. He answered very well, very bright. Now, 1970, that was my first knowledge of Nimal Senayak. What uh, so-called Bakkal Yenegi and uh, Karunrat, whom you worked with later, uh, told me at that time. And of course, as we say, the rest is history. Uh, I will just share another couple of stories which might, of, might be of interest to us and it might be relevant for this occasion. If I am not mistaken, uh, Nimal is the first student to enter Peradeni or any medical faculty from his first school, I think, was Kirindivala, and his uh, secondary school was Henegama Center. He is the first student who had done bio in that school, and he is the first student to have entered the medical faculty. See the credit that he has brought from, from that time, from the beginning. And uh, after he came here, he, uh, when I got to know him a little bit and he later joined the faculty and we became colleagues, uh, I learned that he had the artistic instincts and the interest even while he was in school. There were stories and I have not asked him all this, unconfirmed, so I will share that with you. Uh, there were stories that he used to write novels when he was in school. I used to share that. He and some of his colleagues used to go and see a 9.30 movie somewhere in Gampaha. And then in the morning he write the story, he that into a story, in a single story. I don't, I can't vouch for the veracity of it, but I heard it from a number of people. And I think that is plausible because of the, the kind of writing he did then and later. And you know, this English ladies and gentlemen, Henegama Central is in, a, in, a, in what is called the Gampaha district, whom all of you know. And at that time, Gampaha was the epicenter of the cultural renaissance of Sri Lanka. 
people like Mahagama Sekara, uh, uh, the, the other big names were there. And all of them came from, I, I remember the names, Kastori told me the names, uh, Dhananda Gunawadana, the dramatists, uh, uh, then PKD Sekiratna, actors. Gampa was the epicenter of culture at that renaissance. And Nimal came from that soil, from that uh, primordial mud, as they say. And naturally, culture was instinctively inside him. Later, when he came to Peradini, I'm talking about the culture side, he came into contact with people like Sarachan. That was the renaissance of culture in the university. People like Sarachandra, Siriguna singers, all these. So all these, I think, had a, I won't say profound, but had a, I'm sure, sure had a serious influence on him and his way of thinking. So it molded, or it polished up his genius that he brought anyway. Uh, just two more stories and I'm going to stop. We heard enough about, uh, oh, not enough, but we heard sufficient, uh, all those of us know me very well, about his academic achievements, uh, which, are, which are, I think, uh, beyond comparison, you know, when you take it one by one. And uh, one day I remember my friend, Dr. Laksman Karaliyat, and we were talking a long time ago. He said, we, you would not be able to find a better medical CV than Nimal Senaitis even at that time. And I think that is true. It is true. About uh, three weeks ago, Professor Lama answer, he invited some of the Peradhani alumni, not medical only, but all, from all over Sri Lanka, some for a discussion uh, on his plan for the next 15 years of Peradhani. He had it in Kalamu at the Ectico Vampiro Centre. There were, I think, 200 uh, alumni from Peradhani, Kapila and some of our colleagues were there. Vasanti was there. So there, again, somehow this first student in Peradinia is hanging, you know, <laughs> I, can't, I can't get rid of it. So <laughs> even at that point, the, the person who was comparing said, we in fact, we heard that the first student from Peradinia Medical Faculty, I don't know who it is. <laughs> so then the guy who came to see the discussion said, can we see the first student from Peradinia? Now, it's, it's becoming a little occasion to have it. But what I told when he asked, what can the alumni of Peradeni, you know, Peradeni in general, the university, do to help to regain the place that Peradeni had in the academic world, not only in medicine in general? I said a few things, you know, not very wise things, but nevertheless I shared some thoughts. Then I said one story. I said about 10 years ago, I met. Uh, in my work in uh, Delhi, I met the then Vice Chancellor of the Hong Kong University, the Chinese professor. And uh, I asked him briefly, Hong Kong University at that time was number one in Asia. Singapore was number two. They sort of compete with each other for this number one position. At that time was number one. So I asked, uh, I can't remember his name, he said, how, how, do, you, how, do, you, uh, how do you, how do you manage to become number one, you know, there are so many universities and how do you constantly keep on becoming number one or two? He said many things. It's, it's an all-round thing because marking is done on a number of fronts. But he said one main reason, and this is important, one main reason why we are number one is because of three Sri Lankans. He said, I said what? He said three Sri Lankans have brought us so much academic glory and funding. And those are two of the key criteria and research publications. And who were the three? He mentioned Sriyal Malik, Malik Piris, Lakshman, uh, the dental surgeon, dental surgeon, Samaran Naik, and another dental surgeon, Dias. Yeah, three names he mentioned. And I, I told these guys, all three also happen to be Perani alumni. So, I mean, so I said, there is no, no reason why uh, you cannot bring that kind of uh, stature to Peradhinia with the kind of material, kind of expertise that you have here. And I think Lama, I hope, will pursue that uh, not only for medical faculty, but for all the faculties. I think I should say now. Yeah, we, we heard about the intermediate syndrome and all that, and 
Those days I will remember again in faculty, excuse me if I am reminiscing my story, I am not telling my story, I am just telling stories connected to Nimal. I remember Nimal and uh, Lakshman Pradhyat who is here, having long discussions on, on these kinds of research topics and I think Nimal and Lakshman formed a very strong pair at that time as, as I remember. Uh, later of course, uh, Nimal got into the the aesthetic scene and he continued some of the work. I have seen two of his films. One was the first one that you talked of, Ali Langwala, I haven't seen that picture. In fact, Ali Langwala, as you might remember, was a landmark film. It, I think it introduced Jackson Anthony to cinema, if I'm not mistaken. The first film he did and later he wrote, he developed a great stature. Uh, then it had uh, even people like, if I remember right, I ran Minister Singh, uh, uh, Ravindra Ranning, uh, Sri Vikramage, some of the big names of that time, all were on this, uh, in this film that he did. And it brought a new dimension to cinema, in a way. I saw one of the la la later films, the other film I saw was film, film called Sankranti, which I happened to go because my friends obviously dragged me to the pre premiere at the Regal long time ago. Because I think Nimal and uh, so, we are the co-producers of that film, very different type. I mean, between Alalangwala and Sankranti, I found uh, the genius is there, but uh, expressed in a, in, a, in a slightly different way in each case. Yeah, the Sankranti was a little bit more cerebral for me to understand, and <laughs> so obviously you produce also said the same thing, but nevertheless, it was a good film, a very good film. <laughs> I'm just rambling because I feel quite comfortable here. <laughs> and the other team, just like Nimasya uh, and, and earlier there were the team, team in research with regard to organ phosphate poisoning uh, in the Midget syndrome and all. The other strong team that Nimal uh, had uh, was with the Dharma Sena Patiraja. And I remember how much time he spent with Dharma Patiraja. They clicked and they, how each one liked the other and the kind of work that they did together and that's why they were so productive and so so good in the in the kind of quality films that they gave us to. I'm going to stop now. Last evening before I came I asked my daughter who is a graduate from Peradina. In fact she is first of the second generation of before Chandra's and so is uh, graduate from here. I asked her, do you have anything to tell about uh, she's an uncle Imar, yeah. Tomorrow I'd say a few he said, no, no, we know everything about him. I said, how was he as a, as, a, as a teacher? He said, he was one of our favorite teachers. And he used to wait for his classes. This is what she told me last night, hot news. <laughs> yeah. And then, she said, and he was the fairest of examiners. He loved to go uh, for examinations with him because he was so fair. He did nothing to trick you, he helped you. So, in the next generation also seems to have uh, have the same kind of admiration, same kind of respect that you, that the others are also in the world. So thank you very much. Um, and I hope, like Rama said, that like some of you said, this will be a, obviously a landmark product, landmark autobiography. You know, launching a book is a big thing by itself. Launching one autobiography is a very significant, very, very seriously important event. Yeah. I am like most of us here sitting here, all of your friends, all are very proud of you and we are hoping that you will have the strength, peace and good health to be as productive as you have been and to give us more and more of your genius. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much sir for that enjoyable speech. Now is the time to welcome to the podium the person to whom today and this event belong. Emeritus Professor Nima Sena Naika, over to you sir to address the audience. Good morning, uh, colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on behalf of my daughter Tatrika and myself, I welcome you once again to the book launch. Well, I, so far what I have heard particularly from Palita, I think I am, uh, well, I must say once again I am humbled to, you know, hear all your words coming from 
the first student of the first batch. Um, I thank uh, the Prinsa and the KSM for gracefully agreeing to organize this event. Thank you, Heshan. Thank you, Saman. Thank you, Manoji. Thank you, Dushan. And uh, I also thank the respective councils. When I thought who should be the chief guest, the name that came to my mind, mind immediately was Dr. Bartha Vigo. He knows me well from the 1970s. He knows the faculty very well from the 1960s. Because as, he, as you now know, he belongs to the first batch of students. Um, Pastor, uh, I know how busy you are even these days. But I knew that uh, you would come. I am most grateful. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor Lama, once had planned to be here for the entire proceedings, but uh, last night he gave me a call to inform that he has an urgent meeting at 11. I am very grateful to him for being here at least for a few minutes. Professor Asoka Amardunga, I had known him from the early 1970s when we were together at the Gogam Reporters. Later, we became uh, fellow deans. In addition to his excellent academic achievements, he has literary talents as uh, evident by several books and many newspaper articles he has published. He will give a brief preview of the book. I thank the Dean, Professor Vasant Pinto, for granting permission to have this event in the faculty. I welcome and thank the deans of other faculties, directors of the institutes of, and other university uh, academics for finding time to grace this occasion. Three of my batchmates are here in the audience. Uh, Michael Hetiarchi, my former roommate, um, Upali, and uh, Kanti, I suppose she is here. Yeah, okay. Uh, you will read about our adventures and see our photographs of the good old days in the book. And uh, uh, thank you, thank you Michael, thank you Bali, thank you Kanti and also my good friend uh, Lakshman Karaliyad for being here. A very special guest, Professor Michael Sedwick, is the former professor of clinical neurophysiology of the University of Southampton. I had the privilege of working as a senior registrar at the Wessex Neurological Center during my postgraduate leave in the UK. The training and the experience I gained there have greatly helped me in my patient care as a neurologist. Let me remind, the, my, uh, let me remind that uh, Mike is an honorary member of PEMSA. He attended the inaugural PEMSA meeting. He attended, um, Mike, you remember wearing the PEMSA t-shirt, participating in the proceedings, enjoying with us. Thank you, Mike and Brenda, uh, for being here. There are several others who are uh, who are here, but uh, on my phone, my personal invitation, but time does not permit to address you individually. I thank you for your presence. Under acknowledgements, I have listed the those who assisted me in producing this book. Several of them are here in the audience. Chandima, who did the typing very efficiently. Mr. Kuduravala, whom I have uh, no associated with from the days he joined the faculty in the late 1970s. He helped me in the proofreading. Some other publishers readily came forward to publish, this, uh, publish the book even during these difficult times. The chairman of the company, Mr. Samudra, uh, was very keen to attend this event, but he is unable owing to personal reasons. Re representing uh, is Gayan, who uh, over the past uh, several years very efficiently coordinated the publication of all my books. I made a special request to President Pemsa to invite students for this event. They are the future of the faculty. 
youth of the profession. They should know what our journey has been like during the past six or seven years. That will pave the way for their journey ahead. Welcome and thank you for being here. One or two of you might in 50 years write a story like this and who knows, you might have the book launch in this faculty, right in this very same building. The Physiology Lecture Theatre is now a historic building. It brings back many memories. On a day in late September 1965, at 11 a.m. on the first day in the faculty, I attended the very first Physiology Lecture, Physiology of the Peripheral Nerve by Dr. Jans. Many great academics have delivered lectures on this stage. As students, we never missed a lecture or a clinical demonstration organized by the KSA. I consider this the heart of the faculty. A heart attack was imminent some years back. The visual lecture theatre was to be pulled down to accommodate the new building program. I was the dean and with great difficulty I salvaged the heart. I am happy I did that and I am sure you are also happy. The heart will now go on ticking, I am sure for another half a century or longer. Once again, thank you ladies and gentlemen for being here. I hope my book is up to your expectations. Thank you. Thank you sir. At the same time, to present the complimentary copies of his biographies to the distinguished invitees, I call it in my dear author, Dr. Zena Naika. Sri Lanka College of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons. Over to you, sir. Good morning. Uh, I don't know if it's good afternoon. Uh, I must address the Vice Chancellor also, though he's not here now. And uh, Dr. Faiz Abbey on our guest respondents. Uh, Dr. Nimasya and Anika, uh, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine. And other uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a real privilege to be here uh, when we launch this book by Dr. Nimasi Anayakar, Dr. Gartha. It's uh, much more than an autobiography. Science, medicine, and art in the life and times of Nimal, if I would describe it very briefly. But uh, I am going to describe it in then. Uh, features of a typical autobiography are these. We will first look at that before we get on to this uh, book. Uh, so those are the typical features of a typical autobiography. And uh, we will also look at some world famous autobiographies. Before we look at Nimal's Diary of Anne Frank, Benjamin Franklin's uh, autobiography, Mark Twain, Guiding Motorsan. And they all have a philosophy, underlying philosophy in these books. And you know, of course, Nimal also has a very deep, very important. Philosophy. And what is that? He is trying to tell us that art and science cannot be compartmentalized, should not be compartmentalized. They should be together in all human activities. 
That is what Nimal is trying to tell us in this book. And that is what he has told in his life story also in his life. That is what happened in his life. Nimal seven decades is his magnum opus. A critical view of life, art and science the last seven decades. A walk through life taking art and science hand in hand. Seven decades of creation in medicine, literature, music and cinema. And uh, last but not least, molding of a neurologist by excellence. Some more features of Nima's book, more than 500 pages, epic proportions, beautiful lyrical language, takes the form of an epic novel. Interestingly, it bends from birth to adulthood, critical look at school education in the 50s and 60s, residential university education at Peradeniya, standard of medical education in Sri Lanka and some more. There is much more than that. Scientific inquiry in school days, literary creations in school days, interest in music in school days, interest in films in school days. Why in school he has all these interests? And these are the reasons why he develops a passion for scientific inquiry, literature, music and cinema. All that began in school days. The foundation was laid at that early times. And more, medical education and its eminent personalities, postgraduate studies and training of drawn, life as a doctor, importance of clinical methods, overlap tests, training in neurology, all that. And some more, creative writing, literary criticism, creation of lyrics for songs, for the best singers, singing in duet with the best singers, film criticism, script writing for films, production of films. And let us now look at early, Nima's early childhood. Birth is described with humor in his book. It was a forceps delivery and nurses called the baby Andukes because his head was elongated in the application of the forceps. And the uh, arch has <laughs> and characterizing a child's relatives takes the form of a novel in, in his book. Child appreciates the beauty of the village. While he is in the village, he could appreciate the beauty of the village and that is described in this book beautifully. Child sees the value of village technology. Loss of it is regretted. He, he appreciates the technology in the village. He, he has seen how paddy is produced and he describes it in his book. And that's, that technology is now lost. And we have machines which may be doing harm, more harm than good. I don't know. I mean, then about school education. Nima pays a tribute to the founder of free education, C.W.W. Kannangar. And that's a very important uh, chapter in his book about C.W.W. Uh, Kannangar, who started free education in Sri Lanka. There is pride in his description of the village school. Central school concept of Kannangar is highly praised. How many educated citizens are produced by those schools? Great poet Mahagama Sekar, as Dr. Parit Abekon mentioned, was a schoolmate of Nam Himal. And the question arises was it modernism or neoliberalism that destroyed these assets? Then, then we come to the university student days, his uh, university student days. Nimal's view was, student must engage in studies, not revolution. He did not have participated in student politics or strikes. And he also had admiration of his medical teachers and his desire to emulate them. That is described in this book very beautifully. 
You might see its natural beauty culture of Peradini campus as conducive for studies and thinking. Then scientific inquiry. The Mali's inquiry, inquiry mind was evident from early times. He was 10 when Russia went to space in 1957 and that event had impressed his young mind and he developed a passion for scientific inquiry. He started medical research when he was a medical student. He became a world-renowned researcher in neurology later on. And let us now look at the entry into the world of literature. He, he entered the world of literature very early, very, in his young days. He must start reading literature very early. His interest was in science fiction. He sees the social relevance of these stories. He publishes his own science fiction at the age of 16. And Dr. Palta Bekon mentioned that and that's correct. This is remarkable when it was a difficult task even for adults. He starts a small library for his schoolmates. He, 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 he ran a small library for his schoolmates. His commitment and intent of purpose were evident in the early times. Now let us look at what is the purpose of art. And that's a difficult question to answer. But we will try to answer it briefly. Now there are two ma main views. What is the purpose of art? One is that art has a social responsibility. That is Leo Tolstoy's view, really. And it shows an aspect of life and helps to understand life. That is the purpose of art, purpose of literature, purpose of films, purpose of paintings, any, anything, any art. Then there is another group who believes that art is for art's sake, love of the aesthetics. And even Edgar Allan Poe and Oscar Wilde were belong to this school of thought that is art is for art's sake. And uh, Though Vimal admires Edgar Allan Poe, he did not follow his methods. In position of a good novel, let us look at that aspect also. Your Tolstoy's views were social relevance and social benefit is important. And it must, the writer must address his people in their language. That background should be his culture and kind. Most parts of Nima's book take the form of the novel, and it meets all of the above criteria comprehensively. It serves a relevant social relevance, social benefit. It has social relevance, it serves a social benefit, and it addresses his people in their language, and the and the background is his culture and country. Then let us see how we construct a novel. There's the story and the plot. These are two different things, the story and the plot. Now the story could be king dies and then the queen died. But the plot has to be different. If you are making a film out of that, it has to be different. So we have the plot. The king died and then the queen died of sorrow. So you have introduced a feeling of sadness the plot. Here the plot is plotted to generate a feeling of sadness. And Imam follows this method. But he takes it beyond that. Let us look at that now. The king died, then the queen died of sorrow. That was what everybody believed. But there was a needle puncture wound on the queen's neck. So so mystery and suspense have been introduced. That is that is the method that Imal follows. Relevance of mystery and Imal's literature. In Imal's literature, there is mystery and horror in illness, you know that. All doctors here will know that. Imal's fiction is based on such illnesses. Forms the underlying theme for his films. So that is that is social relevance, that is the any social benefit. He, he tries to teach the people. Uh, Nimal describes these diseases in detail, rabies, tetanus, all that he has described. 
వెళ్ళడం వల్ల ఇస్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ పేషెంట్ పేషెంట్ డెప్రెసివ్ రెండు మాస్ ఆర్ అగైన్ సోషల్ రెలవెన్స్ కమిట్మెంట్ టు కమిట్మెంట్ పర్సిపియరెన్స్ స్టూడియస్నెస్ ఇస్ షోన్ ఇన్ దిస్ బుక్ ఇస్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ హిస్టరీ అండ్ సైన్స్ ఫిక్షన్ సోషలాజికల్ పర్పస్ కుడ్ బి హెల్ప్ ఇస్ హిస్ పర్పస్ కుడ్ బి హెల్ప్ this this his books his creations dispel the superstitious beliefs in mystery and horror in disease ellala ngavala one and gamune and godata examples and then he does literary criticism also methods of literary criticism social relevance aesthetic these are the three methods of literary criticism there are three main methods social relevance that is leo tolstoy and graham hoff were the uh, hoff were the main uh, uh, critics who advocated this this method then the aesthetic value post modernist kind of uh, is critics then the marxist method george, george lucas uh, was uh, advocated that that method marxist method Nimai's method appears to be based on social relevance. He critiques science fiction from the sociological viewpoint. In this book, all that is in this book. Literary criticism by Nimai. Nimai admires famous writers like Edgar Allan Poe, Wilkie Collins. He reveals their mystery fiction from social relevance point of view. Create of detective Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. the art of conan doyle was the creator of sherlock holmes and he was a role model he was a doctor this conan doyle was a doctor and he was a role model he is a very good doctor in this book some of the mass works were adaptations of novels by these authors doyle and conan women in white by wilkie collins he was interested in music He loved music and singing, and singing from childhood. He appraised the the giants of the field. His appraisal of the giants in the field are balanced. He 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 uh, looks at these uh, giants in the field of music in a very balanced manner. He criticizes them in a balanced manner. In this book, he wrote lyrics for songs and sang them, recorded in CD. his songs has been sung by greats like nanda marini and he has sung in duets with greats like lata walpole and that proves the, both the ability singer and the song he was interested in cinema childhood interest ended up being a script writer and film producer and film critic of great ability His close friends in the field were Lester James Pierce, Patti Raj, and Kamal Das. His scripts were directed by greats like Patti Raj. All these things, all these material is found in this book. So that's a very this book becomes very important for everybody because all this information would be found in this book. And cinema is yet another field he excelled in. Only thing he didn't do in film is acting. Then, then the postgraduate training. Valuable information about postgraduate training is found in this book. He develops and develops links with royal giants in the field. He appreciates his commitment and ability. He has the ability to excel in every field he is interested in. Is depicted here also. He returns after successful completion, completing studies, happy to come back to his motherland. The love he has for the love he has for Sri Lanka is exemplary for the younger generation. He was very happy when he came back. He enjoyed seeing Sri Lanka from above in the from the sky, and at the airport he really enjoyed seeing, meeting his friends and relatives. He was very happy coming back. And that's a very good thing when people are leaving this country. Okay, then thank you very much. So what I have to say last is there you can read it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, sir.
This brings the events of today to an end. It is my honor to deliver the vote of thanks to mark the conclusion on behalf of the President and the Council of Pensa. This event is the fruit of the hard work of many people who deserve a big applause. The hard work of organization and conduct was done by Professor Hishan Jarir, President of Pensa. Although not present in person with us today due to uh, unavoidable prior commitments, uh, this would not have been possible without him. Professor Saman Anakar, President of the KSM, was with us all along the way. Thank you, sir. My heartfelt thanks go to all the council members of the TENSA and the KSM who were involved in the organization and the conduct of this event. Without the blessings and the wholehearted support of Professor Vasanthi Pinto, the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, this would not have been possible. Thank you, madam. My special thanks go to the chief guest, the guest of honor, and the keynote speaker who made time for us and this event despite their busy schedules. A special note of thanks to Mr. Prabhu, the office assistant of PEMSA, and the staff of the TRC and the Physiology Lecture Theatre for assisting us with the support and the logistics. Last but not least, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who attended this memorable event amidst all of your work commitments. Thank you very much. With that, we conclude the event and thank you very much for your patient listening.